Okay, you're live. Great, thanks so much. So I'm really happy to be here. I uh, wanna talk to everyone a little bit about how to navigate uh, the business and work environment in a post Me Too era. So just to give you an idea of what we're gonna talk about today, have a little introduction of myself, State of the Union, we'll talk about love and relationships, tiny reminder on Me Too movement, some do's and don'ts, um, and a systems thinking approach as well as um, to advocate. Um, so just a quick uh, bit about me. I'm a author of Sexual Intelligence in Business and the co-chair of Academic Conference on Love and Sex with Robots, founder of Imagine Ideation, global brand ambassador, manager of sextech.eu, eventologist, venture associate, podcast host, and mentor to startups. I am Bobby Vidochka and let's have a nice chat. So, um, yeah, so again, we want to talk about um, love and sex and relationships at work and also uh, sexual harassment. And um, there is a bit of a distinction, but both are sort of circling around um, in the same space. What we'd ultimately like to do is eliminate sexual harassment without completely compromise op opportunities for people to meet um, potential partners and fall in love and because we are social creatures. Um, and just a side note, um, so when I am referring to a post Me Too era, um, what this really means is um, not that Me Too is over, um, but that there's a next level. Um, so, you know, the Me Too movement happened. Um, it's ubiquitous. And, you know, most people um, are quite aware of what's going on, but there's still allegations. There's still cases. It's still, it's still an issue. Um, but also, um, you know, there's a lot more to it now. Uh, so the Me Too brought to light. Uh, more strongly, you know, pay pay inequity, discrimination, um, uh, diversity and inclusion issues, um, and, and this is across um, all industries um, and and all businesses. And so, you know, this the also the work environment and our professional lives are uh, much more intersected with our personal lives as as uh, ever before. Um, and so, there's a lot of crossover there. So it's really, I mean, it's really hard to separate that um, these days. So. Um, I guess uh, I don't need to go too deep into the um, industry statistics. You know um, your own industry. Um, you know viewership is like 646 million, which I looked up. Um, Esports are expected to rise to 1.5 billion by 2023, and that um, female uh, viewership has increased substantially, um, as well as um, you know um, w female gamers and um, even developers and people working in the industry. And so, um, given the state of the union right now, I guess uh, this here is the pink Donkey Kong elephant in the room um, that needs to get talked about, um, and so. The State of the Union is, as you know, I mean, I've listed here um, a few of the, the higher profile cases of what's happened in the last few years. There's a longstanding culture of sexism. Um, you know, many have come forward with uh, allegations, gender discrimination, harassment, sexual assault. Um, it's systemic within the gaming industry, um, although not specific to the gaming industry. Um, so there's sexism, bullying, allegations of abuse, and um, pay inequity, not pay inequity, that should be together. Um, and so, um, so, you know, then we also have love and relationships, um, which are one of the most important aspects of our life. We spend, um, you know, more than half of, of our time in work and in business than, than anywhere else. Um, and so this is a, there's just a few stats here that um, um, that should be interesting to you about, you know, 15% uh, of people say it's the most popular way that they're meeting their significant other at work um, compared to even online or um, through friends. There's also um, um, there's also 76% of people say that due to stigma and HR that they want to keep their um, relationships a secret. And 56% uh, of people um, say that they are dating and, and romance um, at work, and they acknowledge um, that they have done that at least once uh, during their career. Um, and that of those, 92% say that actually um, it helps them to be more excited to come to work. And that um, um, they also report that it makes them more productive. Um, and yet, so this is, you know, like, how do we reconcile 
um, so these these two things. So um, just a little refresher about um, the Me Too movement. So originally started by, from Tarana Burke. Um, of course, it was just to um, it was to bring awareness and solidarity to sexual harassment and sexual violence victims. Really wasn't meant to be like a big thing um, that it became. Um, it was a, a place of sharing for vulnerable uh, women and to share their stories and to feel like um, you know they weren't alone. <clears throat> And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's following the exposure, um, you know, of Harvey Weinstein. It went viral, as we all know. And so, um, so what, you know, kind of what do we do with that? And um, so, I mean, even even people are reporting like that they've the people that they've dated, they've even gone on to marry. Um, and um, sorry, just a second. So you know we have we have a, a bit of a, a delicate issue to deal with. So then, um, how can we, um, um, for companies, how can we lead by example? Um, you know, creating a, a, a respectful workplace culture, management training, sexual harassment, um, and it's not just it's not enough to be a good example. You really do have to um, get uh, training on how to handle complaints and investigations follow through, this is the key, um, you know, the engaging uh, uh, legal advice uh, when allegations are particularly um, sensitive is super important. And then of course, everyone needs to have a harassment policy and training, um, you know, ensure your policy is clear and that um, the training is ongoing and that you have an easy and encouraged complaint process. Um, and so, yeah, here we go, sorry. So for people, you know, how can we also um, avoid sexual harassment? Um, respecting personal space, keep your hands to yourself, um, unless especially notified. Um, there's a publicity test, if you think about it, you know, would you really stand, anything you were to say to someone in private, would you stand up and say that um, to, to someone in public? Um, reading the room, you know, not everybody wants um, a compliment, uh, usually not on their appearance. So you kind of have to understand, um, things about um you know what what are people's boundaries and what are they and that takes time to get to know people and this may be um sound a bit um silly but yeah no butt slapping ugling or making sexual comments or sexual gestures this is um it, it needs to get said explicitly um it it should be obvious but it really isn't um, you know, spreading sexual rumors, uh, gifts, don't give gifts, unwanted sexual romantic gifts. Again, no unwanted touching or hugging um, and discussing uh, your sex life or someone else's in, in, in front of the other. So this is not an exhaustive list of things that you shouldn't do, but it should be, give you a good start of the types of things um, that you wouldn't want to do and you to avoid um, uh, the sexual harassment. Also, um, to speak up. Um, if you are offended by a behavior, um, and this is about you know setting your boundaries and communicating, you know, tell that person that the behavior bothers you um, and ask him or her to stop. Um, it's important um, that you focus on the behavior, not the person, um, because people tend to get a bit taken aback when um, you do uh, call them out for the behavior. Um, so you want to establish your boundaries and be respectful. Um, there is some teaching involved, um, so we need to be kind of a bit patient with people. Um, and then on the other side, you know, take responsibility for your actions, apologize. Um, and But it's not enough to apologize either. You do have to make sure that uh, it won't happen again. And so then you ask, okay, well, what about love? Um, love and sex uh, in the workplace. The thing is, is like we're social creatures, right? So this is going to happen. This is happening. Um, people um, uh, are, are getting together at work. Um, like I said, it's, um, there's a call, concept called gray thinking. Um, and so this is, um, it's kind of a, a, a different approach. We, we have a lot of binary um, thinking right now where something's either black or white or right or wrong. Um, for example, um, like either either you know capitalism is good or capitalism is bad as opposed to um, you know 
capitalism is good in some cases, but in many ways, you know, it, it has problems. So everything's kind of like the spectrum of, of thinking. Um, another example is um, war. So sometimes people think, well, I'm anti-war completely or I'm pro-war. Um, but really sometimes there's, I guess there could be some in between, like I'm against war as a, as a concept. Um, but I guess from time to time, some people think it might be necessary. So the point is, is that there's a spectrum of trying to weigh um, uh, different things. And um, so when we have um, a more flexible way of, of approaching things, then it, you know, things, things get, um, you can be more flexible, more patient with people. Um, and so the, the systems thinking approach um, that, that I like to propose is when you have um, all the intersections of these, of these different things, um, uh, when you are considering um, managing work relationships, basically. So the first is to own your own body. Um, and so, you know, you get to dictate um, what, uh, you know, what you do with your body and who gets to look at it and in what way. Um, and you, you, have, you have full control over your body and what happens to your body. Um, and so when you feel like you really own your body, um, then you'll be more likely to, um, to be able to decide what to do. Do I want to um, pursue a relationship with this person or um, I don't want this person touching me? Um, and then same with uh, empathy and awareness. This is another, um, another thing that when you're, when you're at work, um, you really have to be have an awareness of of the culture that you're in and the people that you're around. I mean, sometimes you're you're sitting at your desk and beside people for hours or months or years, and you know over that time you're going to get to know people. Um, but also, you know, not everybody has the same um, you know life philosophy as you and um, thinks the same as you, and so you have to have that that empathy. Um, to be able to imagine what somebody, um, you know, else might feel before um, you kind of take some actions. You know, not everybody wants to be asked personal questions at work, um, whereas other people do. They really want to deep dive and have like that really close relationship um, and develop those those connections. And other people would prefer to keep them themselves and and just, uh, you know, do their work and then then go home. And there's also moderating irrational emotions. And what I mean by that is, let's say you approach someone and it turns out that they don't like you um, in that way. Um, and then they, um, they mention that, then you, know, you might feel a bit like um, hurt or a bit angry or offended or something like that. So it's, it's one thing to have repeated behavior that's like, okay, no, you, know, you gotta be, you know, stand your ground and say something. Um, but what you don't want to do is, is, you know, get overly upset at first. You just want to ease into that because, um, it's, it's important that, you know, you accept rejection, um, uh, properly. Um, and that also, um, you just give people a chance, maybe a second chance, especially if it's like a first time thing and, and, you know, some people just don't, don't know and they a bit awkward, um, with, with some, you know, social things. Um, Education and learning is also um, very important. Understanding, um, uh, you know, what is the Me Too movement and what is sexual harassment and sexual violence. Also, understanding, um, you know, behaviors and people, and educating yourself about about you know how how different people operate. Um, you know, uh, psychology is is always a good thing uh, to learn about people. Um, also, open communication. So again, setting your boundaries. You really do. Um, have to, I mean, the onus is on everyone to communicate that um, because each person is really quite different. Like, for example, I'm a bit more of a touchy feely kind of person. So, you know, handshaking, uh, you know, hand on the, sho on the shoulder, whatever, you know, in, in Quebec, we sort of do this kiss kiss thing. Some places in Europe do that too. Um, but that's not the case um, in other places. You have to be really culturally sensitive. Um, you know, not everybody wants to shake hands. Not everybody wants to, and but you won't know that unless somebody tells you. So you do have to tell people um, what you know, what what uh, what what your boundaries are. Um, and as I explained before, great thinking. Um, you know, sex and love can be equally serious and fun. You can see how the spectrum of everything from um, you know meeting uh, and having romantic relationships uh, at work versus all the way to sexual violence. This is. This is quite a spectrum of, of activities here. 
Um, and so you you want to be able to you don't want to throw the baby out with bathwater um, is is kind of thing. So you don't want to be like, okay, well, um, I don't want to get myself entangled um, in any kind of um, sexual harassment. And I also don't want anybody sexually harassing me. So then I'm just going to completely like scrap the whole thing and not talk to anybody ever again. Um, that, that That's probably not the solution either. Um, based on the statistics, you know, people are meeting at work and they are getting together and they are um, uh, getting romantically involved, sometimes also at work, which probably you shouldn't do because you're supposed to be there to work. But um, nonetheless, uh, this is the great thinking is is super key. Um, and then there's content, constant consent and respect, you know, so that sort of ties in everything you do have to keep, um, even if someone agreed to go on a date with you, um, that doesn't mean they want to keep going on a date with you. Um, you know, even if, even if you start flirting or, you know, you, you see something that doesn't mean that, that people want to go to the next step. So you do have to keep, um, keep going for that consent. Um, and then, you know, respecting people's boundaries and people's decisions. And then lastly, it's, you really want to be able to speak out and advocate. Um, this is, this is one of the things that's the hardest to do and probably will be the um, best um, way to start um, really tackling um, sexual harassment um, at work. It's women are often not believed. And so this is this prevents um, people from from speaking out or, or filing a complaint. Um, and this is this is quite a common occurrence. I mean, it's Besides not being believed, it's hard enough to come out and say that kind of stuff. Um, never mind not being believed. And so, um, you know, over 50% of women say that they have been sexual, sexually harassed at work. Um, but you can bet that that's not even covering half of the situation because it's people just don't report at all. Um, and so you want to be able to um, also advocate for, like, if you see something, um, you don't want to go run to aid, like say you witness some kind of situation. You want to go run to HR and say, hey, I saw this because maybe that person doesn't want you to do that. Not every person wants to out everybody. Um, so you have to respect um, their decision. At the same time, you want to let people know, hey, I witnessed that. So, you know, I got your back if you want to talk about it or, you know, if you need a witness, whatever. Um, I'm here for you. But that doesn't mean you can go telling people and telling HR and stuff like that. Um, it's important though, um, for people to speak out, um, when possible and, and really workplaces need to make that, um, an option, uh, number one, so that, um, things do get solved. But number two, if you do have a culture where people are speaking out, then, um, probably other people will mind their behaviors a little bit better knowing that there's going to be an immediate consequence here. Um, so, you know, those two things are tough. Um, but I think that's really what's going to move the needle on that. Um, so try to correct people on the spot. Um, that's, that's key because if you kind of let it go and let it go and it happens again, happens again, it becomes like a, um, a bigger thing. Um, and so you want to teach people from the start document. Um, it's important to document and also, um, it's important for men, uh, to, correct other men when the women aren't around. If um, y'all are talking and making jokes and sharing stories and whatever, um, there really hopefully is um, some guys in the room that are willing to, you know, correct your friends and your colleagues to say, hey, that's not appropriate or, or hey, you know, don't, don't do that. Um, it's, this will also um, really help. And then also, if you if you cannot speak out, there are some other resources. So I've listed three here um, that I that I found within the within the gaming uh, um, uh, ecosystem. Um, of course, um, if anybody wants to um, message me and talk through some situations, I'm happy to help and to find uh, some place for you for you to um, for you to go for help um, if needed. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. And I hope that everyone can um, use this information as a better, better way to navigate.
I shall stop. There we go. I'm popping in. Hi, Bobby. Hi. Hi. Can you see me now? I'm going to try to see you. Going to try and see you. I see yeah, you. I see you. Okay. So if if someone is being harassed, what can they do? Yeah, on the spot. Like, hey, don't do that. Number one. So, so, okay. So what if like, what if it continues? What kind of options? You know, like what, what do they have to do? Like if they want to file a complaint or... I mean, it varies at company to company, but so let's say you what you've said something to me that I don't like, or you've touched me. Um, I I definitely have to tell you, hey, don't do that. That's not appropriate. And then ideally, you respond back saying, I'm sorry, I didn't realize, or I thought you liked me, or I'm you know whatever. Um, and then you do have to document. Now, if it happens again, I mean, if you want to go right away to to HR. And to, to file a complaint, yeah, you can do that if they have um, a complaint in HR policy on sexual harassment. Um, uh, some research has shown actually that HR um, oftentimes is not um, necessarily, um, you can go to them and you can talk to them, but keep in mind that HR is hired for the interest of the company. Um, it, and it, it's not that people are don't care, it's just that their their first, um, their first order of action is to protect the company. Um, and so, so keeping that in mind, um, if you don't get the right sort of reaction and action that you thought you'd get from HR, don't be surprised. Um, in that case, then you do have to um, basically hit the internet and different types of um, uh, resources there to, to talk to someone, um, depending on the seriousness of the allegation. So let's say you're, you're, it's your boss or your superior and they've literally said, you know, in one way or the other, if you don't have sex with me, I'm going to fire you. Um, uh, although that is that's happening a little bit less. Um, I think what what more things happen is say everyone's out on a social um, or a restaurant or um, people are just talking and suddenly someone's got their hand on your shoulder and you're like, mm, you know, you don't want to say something because you're in a social and you don't want to embarrass the person, especially if they're your superior. Um, so, you know, in those kinds of cases, um, you know, then you would need to address it maybe a little bit later, an hour later, if you take them aside, like, hey, man, you did that. Can, like, don't do that again, please. Um, yeah. So sure. there, there's, there, you, you have to, you, you have to say something. Um, if you, if you feel like you really, really cannot say something to them directly, um, then you, you need to go to either their superior or a colleague. Um, but there are, like I said, there, there are resources out there. Um, if it's super, super serious, where they're a person of, of influence or they're a person, I mean, you know, you go to the police and because it is illegal, sexual harassment is literally illegal. Um, and so you can file a, a complaint with the police. Um, you can also call up the news stations. They'll be the first to get on your side. Um, so there, there's that as well. Well, there is that, but I know that a lot of people don't come forward because they're scared of, you know, it being public or, mm -hmm. or, or there's multiple reasons people are scared, you know, maybe it'll, they feel like it would give them a bad name or yep. they just are scared of it. You know, maybe yep. somebody was raised up with some kind of abuse and they just like, wouldn't want to keep it to themselves. Yeah. So what kind of suggestions do you have for that? It's like someone, oh, I don't want to stir up anything. And so they're, they're that's just... the majority of the cases. I would say that's 90% of the time. The, that's what people think. It's like, I don't want to, I don't want people to think I'm like that person who, who, who causes trouble. I, I like my job. Um, you know, it's, it, if it, especially if it was kind of an isolated incident and it didn't happen again, then you're like, I don't know what I should do about that. You should definitely tell somebody. So there are, like I said, there are resources online where you can actually document your case um, to a professional. Um, I, I listed those oh, those three websites, um, mm -hmm. but you can also go to the police and that doesn't mean your case is public. Um, and, and so it, you can file charges without it becoming public. Um, depending on the severity of, of, of the case, um, you know, if they're, the thing is that most of the time, it's really not so obvious. They're like little things that sort of add up over time. Um, you know, they put their head on my shoulder next thing you know, they're, oh, what's happening? I'm oh going no, <laughs> your camera, your camera's auto adjusting to something. Uh, hey, oh, 
I don't know. I have a light. Okay. Oh, the light. Um, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So you know, like they're at a party or, or, or something and they ask you an inappropriate, it could be just questions. Like they're not even touching you. They're literally mm -hmm. saying, so like, uh, uh, the latest thing is this, uh, the Cuomo one. Um, you know, did you, so do you like having sex with married men? Um, you know, they start asking yeah, questions. Yeah, that's just not, okay. Yeah, no. right. And, but the, your answer should be, that's not an appropriate question. I'm not going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. Um, that's it should be your answer. Um, and, but, and sometimes when people are are that way, they 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 definitely need a firm knock it off. You know, whether yeah. you got to take them aside and like you said, take people aside. Sometimes you need to do it in front of people. You know, hey, yeah. stop it, so to embarrass them a little bit. But then again, that might piss them off, or there you know, there's a bunch of things that could happen. And we definitely want people to be safe and feel safe. <laughs> we have a question from Danny. Uh, YouTube, the question is awesome topic, and we need to start changing our approach. As you discussed, do you see a positive correlation between work productivity and what you just presented? Um, well, yes, in fact. So when you, um, I think I, I mentioned a quick statistic earlier about um, when people are engaged in an office romance or an office relationship, this tends to um um, on a biological level, a neuroscience level, you you get some good um, neurochemicals going and you feel good about it. Um, mm -hmm. And that actually translates into being more productive and people then like going to work. Um, and and so, you know, it, there's nothing wrong, I guess, with having like a little crush at work or or actually if you legit like someone. Like this is the thing is like if you legitimately like someone and they legitimately like you, then there's really nothing wrong um, with that. and. I, I would say that there's, um, I'm not saying uh, so, but they should like, you know, do their things outside of work because you are there to, you know, to do a job. But if you can do your job better because you're feeling super great um, and that you're more productive, like literally um, if you can get into their certain, um, it's called a flow state. Um, if you get into this flow state, you can literally like 10 X your productivity and creativity. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's, there's a lot of benefits um, to that. And you can actually read more about that in my book. Um, but when people are um, like, I, I, dis I discourage companies from completely trying to like wipe out um, social relations and relationships at work, because I think that they're going to happen anyways. And when they are legitimate and consensual, then, then this is a good thing. Um, it's, it's the other stuff that you want to, that you want to avoid. Um, and so you don't want to, Getting rid of um, positive consensual relationships really won't prevent um, sexual harassment because they're actually about two different things. This is an emotional connection you have with someone, an attraction, a biology, as opposed to a power. So, you know, sexual mm -hmm. harassment is not about sex, it's about power. Um, and so these are two completely different motivations um, and they need to be addressed differently. And relationships are uh, con consent consented consenting consensual consent, consensual that's the word consensual um and but yeah if someone is making you uncomfortable that is just you know that's a huge thing and and sometimes maybe they're doing it on purpose sometimes they don't know you know but they don't know unless somebody tells them you yeah. know this isn't this is not okay yeah. right and regardless of if they think it's okay or not it's really about how how that person feels, how they're being treated, right? Because it's yeah. them, right? And they have their feelings are valid, regardless of of whatever. It doesn't. I think half the cases are just because the person is is not they're a little bit clueless and maybe or socially awkward and they certainly mm -hmm. know. Um, and so a couple corrections will probably solve that solve that problem. It's, it's just a lack of education, lack of awareness. Um, but I mean, when you look at, I mean, in the in. The, the gaming uh, industry in particular, like some of the women who have, who have, you know, called out and, you know, did this big Twitter list and, and all of this, like they are receiving death threats mm -hmm. for coming out. So there it's, it's no surprise that um, women would be very concerned about uh, uh, coming out because the backlash mm -hmm. was, was like astronomical. It was massive. Oh massive. man. When they started coming out and making lists, I was like, oh my, just, it was, 
it, it, it was a good thing. It was a good thing that people would come out. It, of course, like anything that can be abused, you know, as well. Right. Yeah. Um, and it, it's, it's a, it's a rough area. Right. But honestly, you just have to take that as if somebody feels a certain way and you're invading on whatever it is that they feel, mm -hmm. that's their feelings, period, regardless of if anybody else thinks it's right, wrong or indifferent or anything. So, if, if somebody is complaining, let's say you're at work and your friend is getting harassed and they're complaining, but nothing is happening. What can somebody else do to help that person? Help them find resources. Like it's, it's one thing you have to keep escalating. That's the thing. I mean, there, there's a process, right? The first, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to call you out as an individual. Okay. You did it again and call you out again. Okay. You're not listening. Now I have to escalate up to a supervisor or a superior or somebody um, if that person is the top, top person, I mean, there's always somebody else you can go to usually. Mm -hmm. um, Even if it's not within the company, right? Because exactly. if it's a top, top person. There's going to be yeah. another company is at a top, top person um, or somebody at a, an organization, you know, that's with, within your industry that, that you can go to. So there's always going to be that. Um, but again, once you've had sort of multiple recurrences, this is, this is, a, you have to go to the police. Like, you have to document and you have to go to the police at a minimum, start documenting, mm -hmm. um, you know, writing down the instance, diarying it. Here's the date. Here's the time. Um, if, if you have witnesses, get them to witness. I mean, so, cause you're going to have to build a case. Um, even if you don't like take it to court and do the whole thing, you at least have it there. It's like, no, I'm not crazy. And these people said this and here it is. Um, you know, do some people then take to social media themselves, like forget about the authorities. I'm just going to go and you know, I'm just going to blast this everywhere. Blast yeah. everywhere right. And so, but this is, this is the, that's the point they've got to, um, but <laughs> the, you do have to get to a point and these consequences need to happen so that people realize that if I continue this behavior, there will be consequences. I'm a CEO. I will lose my job. Mm -hmm. I will lose everything. I will be shamed in public. Um, I'll be, even if, even if they deny the allegations and even if they don't become charged, it's still, it's, it's a tarnished thing. Um, yeah. That, that is also another reason it can be abused, right? Also, yeah. yes, that, that there's, there's no doubt about that, which is, um, a major problem. And I wish people wouldn't do that because you really, really cause a lot of problems for the people who are really suffering. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, this is, this is very fortunate, but um, I would also say that, that even before all of this training, mm -hmm. training, 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 people need training. Um, you need to have ongoing training, not just about wagging your finger, like, and sexual harassment, also about how to manage the positive relationships at work. You mm. need training. That was going to actually, that kind of leads up to my next question and the one that CJ Anderson is asking right now, but I was going to talk about a lot of companies in their, you know, o over time generations have become more and more progressive and things, you know, that seemed okay in the past are not necessarily okay now, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. like uh, stereotypes and a lot of other things. Yeah. Um, so a lot of companies, they historically, their historic culture, um, it is a certain way because it's just been that way. So what, like, like you were saying, you, you have, have these classes. So what's other ways that you can change historic culture in organizations um, that, you know, historically they're like, these things are okay, but you know, are not really okay. I mean, there's, there's time, which nobody wants to wait for But of course, like you said, the generations eventually, do do come up and and are more progressive um you might need to do a complete c sweep sweep like out you go everybody um at that level and and you know the people that you are replacing them with are have a specific um uh, a specific um uh, mandate to to shifting culture and sh shifting culture comes from leadership um like i said so it's not just they do have to lead by example um, at my company, our CEO leads by example. Um, he is amazing and he sets the tone for the culture. Um, and then it, it trickles down from there. Um, so you need people up at those levels. Otherwise, yeah, the, the culture will continue if you just keep popping in, you know, those, those same folks who keep, mm -hmm. uh, you know, having those, that philosophy. You need people. Um, 
there's also they can create a position chief you know there's chief uh, culture officer um and those types of things but it's also the so it's not just uh, the staff that need training it's the leadership needs training as well um so people can can learn um, and it has to be consistent because if they oh we're going to have this you know this whole training here um in january and then there, there's nothing for that year and then nothing for another year yeah. things could slip and so it's like if you if people are not constantly aware or mm -hmm. things not constantly put reminded you know yeah. so let's get to cg anderson's question are you seeing companies big and small truly trying to address harassment or even just the hostile slash bully environment versus just lip service? It's a mix. I see companies that are really, really here. We are again. What you did I? it. You broke it. I swear to God, I have like this huge one right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, there are companies that are going full on revising all of their, their sexual harassment policies, um, it's something that some companies are actually speaking to employees when they get hired. They ask like actual questions. Have it's like addressing it like the minute you get there. It's part of the onboarding. Um, it's it's the ongoing. Um, like at our company, the equity, diversity, inclusion conversation is constant and it's embedded in all aspects of the entire company. Um, and so, yes, some companies are, other companies aren't. I mean, it's you could say the same for, um, you know, some of the, the diversity hires, the Black Lives Matter. Um, sometimes companies are doing it because if they don't say that they're doing it, they're going to get like lamented on social media. Forget it. Um, so it's it's hard to tell the difference from the outside who's who's doing you have to talk to the people um within but yeah there's definitely a mix and the size actually doesn't matter um there are some very large companies that are are very good at company culture and other companies that are obviously horrible right it's i'm sure it's all different uh, so we did kind of touch on this so if somebody that you work with tells you that he or she is having a problem with another employee but wants it to be confidential what should you do? I mean, they shouldn't, if they really want it confidential, I, they probably shouldn't be telling you. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it depends. Are like, are you friends? And like, they're just saying, Oh, I don't want to do anything about it, but this happened to me and I just want to vent about it. Um, that the person that they're venting to, you really have to re respect mm -hmm. that how they want that. That's how they want it. It's you can't then go run to HR on their behalf or something like that. So because like if, if someone were to tell me, I should make clear. So are you just telling me because you want to talk to me about it or do you need some help? Right. Yeah. So yeah. you know, just ask them if they need some help with it. Yeah. And then help them. I mean, and then you, help them. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's all the same steps are there. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you want to take them with you. They, you don't want to go alone. Um, mm -hmm. and if that person's willing to go to HR with you or willing to go to the police with you, um, that's amazing that that person's, Good friends to keep them. All right, let's see. Um, so dating from someone from work, you think it's fine because that is a consensual thing. Um, so let's say um, somebody from work is not necessarily harassing you, but they're asking you out on a date and you don't really want to go, but you don't want to hurt their feelings, you know, and you, you just want to keep it mellow. How, how, do, how do you, how would you approach that? Yes. So, I mean, because this is literally happened to me, um, I just very respectfully say, no, like, you're great. I like, you know, as you as a person, I really respect you. Um, but I'm, I'm not interested in that. But thank you. You know, just to be gracious, even if um, you don't like them, like you really don't like them, you should still be professional. Um, because, yeah, you don't want to hurt people's feelings, but you do want them to you don't want to go up with them. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that actually, you know, that that response should be how you respond to people, like regardless of work or otherwise. Um, it's it, as long as everybody is clear and respectful, um, you know, then everything should go well. You can also, you can expect that person to feel, I mean, they might feel a bit of a jab, but <laughs> like they, they liked you and there's nothing wrong with someone liking you. And there's mm -hmm. nothing, nothing wrong with someone asking you out um what the wrongness comes when you said no in a very respectful way and then they still continue to 
you know, looking at you across the room and sending you messages on email and keep asking you out. And that's a problem. Um, that's, I would say that's probably less of a sexual harassment thing, although it does, it does fall under sexual harassment, but it's more like this person does have, you know, lacks a bit of, um, social, social, um, skills. They don't okay. know. Well, I know, like I was raised, like my dad was always complimenting women. Oh, your shoe are pretty. And, you know, and um, so that was kind of like, that was like an okay thing. But, you know, now now it's like, it's not okay to compliment. I mean, that kind of, that kind of stuff is iffy. So where's the line drawn with that? You think this is, this is where you have to pay attention to people. So I don't mind um, compliments and Mm. I make it pretty clear when you meet me that I'm okay with that. Um, I don't like derogatory, like to be called sweetie, um, you know, that where I'm, I'm down here, but mm-hmm. you know, you look nice today. That's, that's okay. Um, but there's a difference between you look really nice today or you look great in that suit um, versus, Oh, you look really nice today. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like there, there is a difference. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> there is a difference. You know, they're like, it's, oh. it's there, but even so, um, on that topic, even if someone wears um, what would be considered a sexy outfit to work, this is not an invitation. Um, mm. They may want to compliment, and when you get to know them better, then you'll know if you can compliment them or not. Um, but if you don't know people, you should definitely like just play it safe until you know better. Um, you really need to understand people's boundaries. So yeah, definitely don't tell him or her that they look really nice in those jeans, right? That is just not an appropriate kind of no, uh, no. And this question shouldn't refer to particular body parts. Mm. Yeah, that's a good rule. Unless don't to- you already have an established romantic relationship and it's consensual, and you you know you're doing that. Um, but still, that, there's a time and a place for that, right? Even also, if you are in a relationship and you're working a company and there's a lot of people, you don't just go, "Hey, so you know what I mean?" Yeah. You know, you, you keep you still keep that kind of professional. Yeah. So let's talk about different kinds of harassment. Let's say someone's boss is like yelling at them all the time, um, just yelling at them, right? And uh, they've tried to, you know, don't yell at me, you know, because I I know in some places where I've worked, you know. Uh, that's manual labor kind of stuff, a boss will call someone an asshole or a moron or whatever. And I don't put up with that stuff, but a lot of people do. Um, So what should someone do if someone is just uh, like yelling and mean and what's the course of action for that? Well, I got a couple of things to say about that. So number one, usually when a company is constructing a sexual harassment policy, um, good, a good, the best practice is to also have a um, regular harassment policy. And so, you know, um, yelling, cursing, um, mm-hmm. being discriminatory, all of those things um, should also um, follow uh, in, in your policy. That's number one. Um, number two is, again, the ongoing training. Um, but places that sort of operate like that are probably places that will are less likely have a policy and less likely to get training. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the second, the, the third thing is of course, again, you have to speak out, um, not matching them, like not having a yelling match back, but letting people know, I don't accept that behavior. And then like literally not accept it. Um, and then finally I would say, is that job really worth it? Like, do you, if that's the culture there, do you, you have, a, you have choices. Um, mm-hmm. we're, we're talking about generally, if we're talking about gaming industry, I mean, this is a, there's other places to go. Yeah. The gaming industry is kind of booming right now, right? Yeah. And it's kind of blowing up. All right. So let's talk about harassment from not within the company, but like maybe a client or, um, you know, a vendor or something like that. What, how, how would you treat that differently or the same or? Well, that one gets a little bit more tough, right? Because uh, sometimes your clients, like without the client, you don't have business. Um, mm-hmm. So um, you have to make some hard decisions because your your sexual harassment policy does not apply to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then there's generally a lot of money on the table. If it's a vendor, there's lots of vendors out there. Um, mm-hmm. So it's it's a vendor. I mean, get another vendor. 
it's it's not like there's no competition. Uh, <laughs> right. um, go to, go to the person's boss, and if they're the boss, just go right. somewhere else, right? If you're, purchaser, if you're the purchaser, you have a lot more leverage. Mm-hmm. Um, say, hey, don't pay, and you know, escalate. Hey, call up their manager and say, like, your person is acting like this and this and this, and if you don't stop them, I'm going to take my business away. Uh, you have leverage there. Um, the other way around, that one's tougher. Um, it kind of depends. You have to make a decision on how you're going to um, approach it. Of course, the, sort of the same action, call it out in a respectful mm-hmm. way. Like, hey, you know, that's not really, I don't kind of accept that kind of behavior. Um, and then if it continues, then you have to have um, deeper conversations. Generally, that's when you start um, bringing in third parties, um, somebody else, either from the company that they're with, um, or something else. So yeah, if there's a point of escalation, of course, do that. Um, but then if you need some third party presence and mitigation, um, cause I'm not sure that, you know, someone who's belligerent or just being discriminatory is necessarily something you can go to the police to. Um, if they fully sexual harass you again, this is still illegal company policy, notwithstanding that's illegal. You have, you have, um, legal action that you can take. So depending on the severity of the situation, and then if none of that is working, I mean, you honestly have to look, take a deep, you know, look and see it like, is this worth it? I mean, how, how can it be? Yeah. How can it be? So um, when there were conventions, right, there were, had been a lot of times that people had came out and said, you know, I was roofied and I was, this happened to me or that happened to me. Um, my number one tip is don't leave your drink sitting out, right? If you're going to drink, don't leave it anywhere sitting out. Don't let somebody else get you a drink or bring you a drink. Make sure you have it. But do you have any other kind of tips for like you're at a convention and there's a party and it's just a bunch of people and uh, any kind of tips for that? I, I mean, it's also, this, off the subject a little bit, but no, it's okay. It's, it's, and I'm sorry if I keep repeating myself, but it's, this is part of the training. So people who are at those places, they all work or involved in some kind of organization or company. Um, and so again, this is why it's super important that there's tons of training and awareness and that we keep having talks like this um, so that it keeps driving home um, the message and eventually it will s- sink in. But for those who really have nefarious intentions, um, because it, no amount of training is probably going to change their mind, it will be consequences that change their mind. Um, and then it'll be too late because then their lives will be ruined. Um, mm. But it's, so there's, there's very, it's, so the roofy one is a, is a, is the perfect um, um, quagmire because you don't know who roofied you. So mm-hmm. you can't go and, and do that. So, I mean, obviously, you know, manage your drink, but also um, yeah, manage who you're being around. It's, I mean, this is when you go into sort of, um, when you go into a bar and you start drinking, what you can expect are a couple of things. And one of them is that you probably will get drunk. Um, and so there's certain things that you can expect. Um, you know, when you get on an airplane, there's a chance that you might crash. Um, so understanding the risks that you're taking mm-hmm. um, uh, is one thing. I mean, they're, like I said, so as the airplane example, I mean, they take all the safety precautions in the world um, and still, you know, stuff happens from time to time. Um, so, so, and you can't like generally sue the pilot. So what do you do? Um, that's kind of like, that's a real quagmire, but yeah, definitely. There's a couple other things you can do. Like, yeah, don't, don't uh, take a drink from someone. Right. Make sure that you have friends that you trust that know where you're at and what you're doing and what, Mm -hmm. around what time they can expect you and keep contact with them, you know, on your phone. I know like if you're drinking and whatever, Sometimes you can't always stick to what you the plan is, but if you have someone around you that you know you can rely upon, which I feel is super super important, especially with events like that, because yeah, and I mean the the, the kids these days, they, well the kids all days, you know they're gonna do drugs and they're gonna get drunk and uh, you know they're gonna get themselves you know into situations. This is this is. This is kind of the thing. I mean, and when, you know. when people get intoxicated, their values go out the window. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, so yes. you just got to know that you are stepping into a situation that is potentially dangerous. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's risky for women. 
there's a lot of situations that are risky for women and um, until we can continue doing this. So, and, but I, I understand the feeling like, well, but it's not my fault. And you know, I'm the one who's got to suffer. Like I totally get that. Um, also, you know, why is it me who has to do the training? Why is it me who has to be the one to teach them how to act? And this is a, this is a common um, and legit complaint. It's just, that's how it is right now how it is right now but we all have to do it so that we can actually you know make a change and and because there is still kind of a double standard right like some things i've heard women say to men is okay but if a man were to say that to women it is not okay right and right. that is just the way that it is right is it right or wrong or whatever that's not up for me to decide i just know you know how i feel about things and um, there is that double standard. So just because you see someone doing it doesn't mean that it's okay, right? Right. Um, so here's another uh, comment question from Danny. How about the public sector? Might be harder and might take longer to change the culture. The, the culture in the public sector is a lot different than the game. Oh, culture. yeah. Big that, time. Big yeah. time. Yes. Um, but on the other hand, um, they are more susceptible to publicity. Mm -hmm. One false move, um, and uh, it it really does um, it really does hurt. And when politicians, when it comes down to um, votes and things, you know they tend to move pretty fast. So it all depends on <laughs> what is the issue. Um, but I mean, you can see. I don't know if you know in um, uh, in Canada recently they um, they have some systemic problems within. Um, the, the police and the um, the security, uh, like the RCMP and, and all of that. And uh, they just recently appointed a 12 year old um, Girl Scout to be the, the temp interim um, uh, director of the entire Canadian like military and police. Really? Yeah. I did um, not know anything about that. Mostly to make a point that we can't even find anybody who fits the bill, who doesn't have that culture that they're going to bring with them to mm -hmm. staff this position. So who are we going to get the, you know, who's the, the purest, most, you know, right person in the world? Well, she is. <laughs> that's right, right? So oh, that's amazing. So it's, it's, and they did that. That was political, obviously. But they mm. did that as a response to, um, I mean, it's it's been over, I'd say it's been a, a few years now, maybe five years, where some of the, the women from the RCMP um, started to, to, to come out and, and call out stuff. And so, like I said, the whole calling out part, it's hard, but it's, it's pretty important. And that's, that's how you affect change. It, it, yeah, it is hard. But you know what? It's the, like the stuff that went that people posted publicly online, that that shifted so much things, right? Yeah. That shifted so much things. Now the 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 men that were feeling safe that they could do this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. they don't feel safe anymore. And mm -hmm. I noticed like I was talking about how you can how people could use how could they could do that to manipulate things. But you know, there were many, many people that called out and they just it, I did this, I and issued a public apology. And um I, I think that's good, you know. It, that shame it works it's, it's it's sad but shame works shame yeah. works and seeing that so public i'm sure a lot of people were like oh man you know i hope i don't get called out or i better know, change my behavior i better change my behavior yeah. in my perspective but it's not it's about just changing the your wrong behavior reason? Hmm? It's, like, it's like some people are changing the behavior for the wrong reason not because it's right but because like i don't want to get fired but right. you know i also i have that's a, a start it's that's a, a start. start i'll take it i'll take it right it's a start right but you know the behavior needs to change right the conception of what's right and wrong and you know that needs to change but like i said every every generation is more and more progressive right yeah you know look at my parents my parents were you know um, they said words that now you, whoa, oh, people yeah, didn't, you know it. what I mean? And, and that was just, oh, oh that God. was just okay. And, yeah. 
<sighs> yes, so this has been an amazing talk. Thank you so much, Bobby. This is amazing. Uh, if you want to be in the Discord, if there's any other questions, come on there. We have a whole nother day. That's do you say that in Canada? Whole nother? A whole nother day, yeah. Yeah, you say a whole nother instead of another. I can just say another. We have a whole nother. We have a whole nother day with a bunch of great, great uh panelists and speakers. And we will see you tomorrow. I think it's what, 6 a.m. Pacific time? Yeah, because I get up at 5 to do this. <laughs> so thank you so much, Bobby. I appreciate it very much. And we will have her presentation is going out to the people that have signed up on IndieGame.Business for the free lectures. If you want the presentation and you're not signed up, please sign up right now. And we will get that out to you. Thank you. Great. Thank you.